Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Yenny, and for today's video, I wanted to share five of the most important life lessons that I learned as a social worker. And I believe this video can be helpful to really anyone. You don't even really have to be a social worker or be interested in social work. It's the lessons that I learned as a professional working in the field that has really changed just my outlook. On life and I really believe has strengthened me in the long run so before we get into the video hi if this is your first time on my channel my name is Yeni and I'm a social worker health equity researcher by day and on the weekends I like to make these kinds of educational and fun videos on my YouTube channel I talk about social work social justice mental health life advice psychology sometimes I make vlogs sometimes I make tech reviews I'm a person with many many interests and I like to use my channel as a way of sharing them so if any of that sounds interesting Interesting to you please make sure to check out my channel and subscribe it would be awesome if you join me in my small corner of the internet over here and with all that said let's get straight into the video so the first lesson that I learned as a social worker that I believe has really changed my life is that patience is the foundation to all things now I understand that many times when we're feeling stressed we say we're like max capacity right and there's just simply no room for patience at times it's not just a you thing trust me I struggle with that as well because when we're stressed dealing with personal things and then we have to go to work and then we deal with the stresses of work maybe a difficult co-worker maybe a difficult manager maybe just the type of work that you're doing is really difficult I know that as a social worker we deal with a lot of societal obstacles you know whether it is a lack of of funding, a lack of resources, maybe society at large is preconceived notions about the people that you work with. There's all these obstacles that can make us feel like we're really working against the tide, working against the wave in a way. And patience is key in working in these kinds of environments because you have to realize we are not going to be able to make giant visible like societal changes within a day within a month within a year maybe not even within five years it can be frustrating so patience is important when it comes to understanding the scope of work that you're in like we can make changes I think a lot of people do want to go to work and make positive changes especially if you're interested in social work but you have to be patient in the work that you do with the people that you work with in the society that we live in and also importantly you have to be patient with your Yourself. We're not expected to know everything when we come into the field and we won't ever know everything. You can be totally knowledgeable, but there's always something to learn, which goes into my second one. Let me not spoil it, but all that to say, be patient with yourself. That's really important. And that is an important way to make sure we don't burn out. We have to be patient and kind to ourselves. So the second most important lesson that I learned as a social worker is that humility is how we grow. I think it can be very tempting for many of us who have, let's say, a degree or even if you don't have a degree, let's say an X number of experience, you know, like I've done this. I know what this is. And it's always good to be confident. I don't want to say don't be confident in the work that you put in or the experiences that you've gathered or even the degrees that you've worked hard towards. But especially when it comes to social work, working with vulnerable populations, even if you you're, let's say even in like the tech industry someplace I'm totally not in I think humility can be an amazing key to helping us grow not only as professionals but as individuals it's my opinion that when one is humble we keep our minds and hearts open to absorbing more learning more when we become a little too overconfident in ourselves I feel like I'm a very visual person I see it as our doors of learning and curiosity just being closed we're like oh I know what I'm doing this is good and the world is always ever changing humility allows us to grow absorb new information and allows us to just always you know be sharp on top of things make sure that our knowledge from 10 years ago that might have worked great we're not just sticking to that because in 10 years many many things have changed so that is why I think humility is a really really important life lesson that I learned by being a social worker it's always important to have your mind and heart open to learning about new things if you're worth working with a patient they know more about their lives than we ever will we could get little clues here and there oh like male uh, this age from this socioeconomic background they're using this illicit substance they have this mental illness that's it you know we only know as far as they tell us we'll never 100% understand what our patients are going through so having that home humility realizing that we're not here to change people we're here to learn from other people's lives and play a supportive role 
is very, very important and really has changed my life for the better. The third most important life lesson that I learned by being a social worker is that paperwork is not just paperwork. I know that when people are interested in social work, they probably hear a lot of horror stories about documentation, treatment plans, and paperwork. And I don't think it's just being a social worker, it's really working in healthcare. You've probably been to the doctor's office where your doctor sits in front of the computer, jots down all those notes, and then they always seem to be writing things, right? So even as social workers, whenever we interact with our patients, we have to write case notes. And those can be an absolute nightmare, I totally understand, but there are ways to deal with case notes in an efficient manner. And a lot of that has to do with time management, understanding what parts of a case note that your agency or the insurance company is requiring. That way you're not writing like an essay when you only needed like 10 bullet points. Also, documentation is important because all of these paperwork and the notes that you put in go into the medical records of your patients. So when I work as a social worker, I have really trained myself to understand that when we do documentation for our patients, it's not just like the not important part of work. It is so important because it is all about that well-rounded care for your patient it's not only the 45 minute face-to-face -face counseling session or therapy session that you have with your patient once they leave and you spend that 20 25 minutes writing the case note or even 5 10 minutes writing a case note for like a quick consultation all of that is part of your well-rounded ethical care for your patient so I always want to emphasize to new social workers or people in social work school don't already go into it antagonizing the paperwork be like ugh, like I love this part of social work but not this part I understand some agencies may be a bit overbearing. I know that many times we live in a society where agencies and insurance companies being honest do prioritize the billing process more than the actual care for the patient. I hate it. It makes me angry. It is what it is. But we have to make sure that our work still doesn't affect the continuous care of our patients. You can't like strike and not do documentation for a person because you don't like the format. That person's care should never be negatively altered by our society's issues. So you deal with it the way we can. We're given the cards that we're given and you work with it the best you can. So I'm thinking of making like a whole nother video on how social workers can properly, efficiently deal with documentation and paperwork with our overloaded caseloads. I totally understand that. But trust me, it's possible. Once I figured out my pace, I stopped working past five at work. I'm in at nine, I'm out at five, and all my documentation is in on time. It's billable. I've never had issues with my documentations. And yeah, but that's a whole nother video. But documentation is not just dumb paperwork. It's an important, it provides a well-rounded care for your patient. And it's, like I said, part of your patient's medical record. So it's really important and part of our ethical care for our patients and the people that we work with, that when you sign off on something, it is your best work. It is the most accurate work and you didn't rush it, right? That's really important. The number four life lesson that I learned as a social worker is that self-care is sustenance and self-care is how we do not burn out. Obviously, if you've been in social work school or been near social workers or you are in social work, self-care, self-care, self-care. You hear it all the time, but how much, how many times do we actually apply it to our lives? I know that social workers are notorious for not doing self-care and obviously it's important to not get burnt out not only for our own mental health and taking care of our mental physical health but when you get burned out it affects the work that we do and the work that we do is very delicate and sensitive and we and important because we work with vulnerable populations we have to be as as what is it sharp as a tech is that is that the phrase we have to be sharp we have to be on top of things we have to be awake and that's a lot of pressure i totally understand i've definitely had sessions where i could not understand or fully comprehend anything that was going on because I was out of it. My mind was not there. I was not well. I should not have been at work. And you know, my patients, thankfully, I've worked with them long enough where they understood and they're like, um, you need to go home. You don't look well. <laughs> And I just felt so ridiculous and embarrassed and I felt guilty because I wanted to be there for them, but I was only there physically for them. I was not there emotionally, mentally. I was not making this connection. I was not actively listening. I was just barely trying to stay awake because I felt so sick pre-COVID. Disclaimer. So self-care is the key to staying in the game longer and also just being a better player if we're going to continue with the game analogy. You have to take care of yourself, whether that is making sure that you're 
in and out of the office at the right times whether it's making sure you take the proper one hour lunch break and you know i think many of us who are social workers or many of us maybe just in society we want to make a change we want to make differences we want to be helpful and if you want to make those happen you have to make sure that you are taken care of that way our impact is stronger and our impact goes further so you social workers out there make sure you do that self-care trust me and last but not least the final lesson for this video at least that i learned as a social worker is that social work is not a job it's a lifestyle it really is um whether it's burnout like i mentioned before from people having been in the field for a long time compassion fatigue is a big part of just society when there's just so much inequality and inequity and injustice in society seeing that every day it can really take a toll on us especially if we don't do self-care but bringing it back I believe that many times when we take ownership of the work that we do, especially when it comes to being like a social worker or working with vulnerable populations in general, we can't take this as just a nine to five. I think it is so much more than a nine to five. And I understand that that's a lot of privilege to be able to work at a job that you feel passionate about. A lot of the times when you have to pay the bills, when you have children, I totally understand. It's a privilege to be able to work at a job where you feel passionate about what you do. So me understanding that privilege, I really make sure to check in with myself every day. I remind myself, this isn't just a job. This is a lifestyle. This is a career. This is way more than just the number of people on my caseload. This is my passion. This is my life work. And I'm here because I have the privilege to be able to work at a job that I want to work at. I wanted to be a social worker to help people. And I think it's always good to remind ourselves in those moments of high stress. First of all, is this what you want to do? That's always a good, important question. Um, and if you have the resources and the privilege and the ability to switch jobs would you could you what does that entail clearly there's so many layers of conversations that need to be had with yourself about this whole topic but i guess the life lesson really is that when you take ownership of the work that you do whether it is social work whether it's in the tech industry whatever 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 if you treat it as more than a nine to five not in like a negative way obviously as I want to be here, I chose to be here, then you take ownership of the work that you do. Every email you send, every treatment plan that you make, every project that you have, I, at least for me and from what I've witnessed and experienced as like a young professional, there's just more weight to the work that you do when it's not just a nine to five. To the people who want to be social workers out there, really question yourself. This is not an easy field. Are you passionate about this? Do you want to do this? Why do you want to do this? And is it just a nine to five or is it a career? Because I strongly believe when it comes to working with vulnerable populations, we need people that take it as more than a nine to five. When we really take ownership of the work that we do, I think that is really how we make like the changes the ripples in society starting from you and the work that you do with each of your clients imagine you have 10 people 20 people 30 people that's 30 people that you can really help effectively by being whoever you are and even if it's not like getting them benefits because it the application and the eligibility of getting benefits for people sometimes is so confusing it's like they could be disabled and they can't get like disability i don't understand anyway that's not the point okay so as usual my camera battery died but i was just trying to finish off that point by saying you can change their lives and at the end of the day i think that's what's been more rewar most rewarding for me to be able to change the lives of my patients by really just having the foundation of patience humility empathy compassion and yeah obviously like treatment plans are important documentation is important um Connecting them to resources like benefits is really important, but treating people like human beings, you know, that's really been, those are the greatest skills that I think any social worker just needs to have. Just treat people like people because that's so lacking in our society. That's it for this week's video. I do apologize for finishing off like this. Please let me know what you thought of my five most important life-changing lessons that I've learned from being a social worker. Are you interested in social work? Are you a social worker? Or are you not, but somehow came across this video and was it helpful to you? 
Um, all that to say, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you're taking care of yourselves physically, emotionally, mentally, and in all of those beautiful ways, especially in these weird times we're living in. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye!